Everyone has a good story to tell, and you know it is a good story when the person leans in and says, see what had happened was, and then tells the story. This podcast provides those opportunities to tell those types of stories in education. The stories will be from the good, the bad, and everything in between. We wanted to do this podcast to showcase stories in education and to give flowers to educators who deserve recognition for their excellence. Our guests will feature parents, students, teachers, administrators, and just about anyone who is involved in education. These stories will inspire you, challenge you, and help you to reflect on your practice of education, whether it be from the inside of the classroom or outside. If you have a good story to tell, we'd love to hear it. Email us at contact at andredowdy.org. We'd love to have you or your story on a future episode. See What Had Happened starts now. Welcome to See What Had Happened, where we share educational stories from the good, the bad, and everything in between. We are your co-hosts, Andre and Danielle Dowdy. Hey, sprout out to all who have followed us Mm -hmm. since episode one. And if you would like to listen to previous episodes, we can be found on all podcast platforms. All of them. If you are watching this on our YouTube channel, sprout out to you too. Absolutely. Today's guest is a math specialist passionate about building an equitable environment so that all can learn real math Mm -hmm. and the founder of Someone Cares. Welcome to the show, Nancy Estepa. Hey, Nancy. Oh, hi. Welcome. Hey. And thank you for having me here. You're very welcome. Nancy, tell us more about yourself. Okay. um, So... Uh, I guess I'll just start. I've been in public education for about 12 years um, in Hampton Roads, Virginia. So on the East Coast, um, I've always been elementary teacher. And um, for the past five years, I've actually served as a math specialist or a coach within a few different schools in the area. And so I have just recently um, started, you know, exploring being an entrepreneur and I've started up my own Um, educational consulting and tutoring company to support students in my area whose family, they might need assistance, but their families may not be able to afford um, extra tutoring. And there's a lot of students out there who need help, whose families can't afford it right now. And so that's just where my heart work has always been. And so I'm taking a leap to um, do what I love to do on my own terms. (laughs) Well, congratulations, congratulations on your leap, I Mm -hmm. should say. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure that leap was a little scary to jump away from it and then to go into the edupreneurship of of it all. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. But just like every big transition, I think like when you have a really rough time in your life or maybe this is just me because like God knows, like I'm just ridiculously persistent and don't give up on anything. Mm -hmm. So if it's ever time for like something new, there's always a way uh, that I know it's time for something new. It's like a big challenge or like you feel like the world's ending and then it's not really ending. It's just time to do something new. So yes, yes. I'm excited about it now, but it wasn't all like, oh, yay, <laughs> when it first started, you know. Yeah, it's like that push and you're like, why are you pushing me? Mm-hmm. But then yeah, you look back like, at like, it I don't know like, what to do. I don't know if I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have definitely been right there with you on that part. And I'm sure we could talk about that that part for hours. Maybe that's another conversation Mm -hmm. uh, once we hit stop on this recording. I'm telling you, that's when the best things happen, though, because necessity is like the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. So every time I've done something big, it's always been like at a weird time. So I'm not even scared anymore about it. I know it's going to work because it always does. And that's one of the coolest parts. Because you say to yourself, I know it's going to work, but it just sure feels rocky right now. Like it's going to. Yeah, work well, out. because growth. Yeah, growth is uncomfortable. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes. and I say that to my students all the time. So if I didn't, you know, really believe it when I was going through uncomfortable times myself, you know, how can I say that to my students and then believe me, you know, yeah. so. I don't get scared of that stuff anymore. I'm just like, OK, how long is this ride going to be? Mm. <laughs> And we always talk about like, figure it out this time, like taking that leap, take that leap of faith. Like we tell our students and our friends and family all the time, like, why don't you take that leap? You're really good at taking the leap. But when it's actually time to take that leap, 
<laughs> you get a little scared at that very first jump. Mm-hmm. The very first jump. It's, it's, yeah, and it's really, it's funny how comfortable we are, at, like, telling other people, like, you can do it, take the leap. But then when it's your turn to take mm-hmm. the leap, it's like, how come you don't believe in yourself as much as you believe in all these other people? So and true. so then you so have true. to, like, check yourself sometimes and be like, no, you're going to do what you would tell somebody else to do. Absolutely. And it's going to be fine, you know? Yeah. Yes. And then it helps when you see others who have taken the leap and you're like, yeah. look, they're making it. They're, they, it's not the end of the world for them. They're, they're getting somewhere. And so yeah, you, knew you feel it. a little and bit I mean, more it's, comfortable. It's not always going to be perfect the first time, too. And it's you're going to grow like in any situation. Mm-hmm. But if you're, I really feel like if you're a good person with good intentions, you know, then you don't have to worry about having all the answers or being perfect. Because if you're a good person with good intentions, then other people with similar personalities and values surround you. And then everybody empowers each other up. That's yes. like stay in a positive environment and it'll, it'll work out. It, it always does. Always and just pray. Always it. pray too. <laughs> yes. So the way our podcast works is real simple. We always start with the setup of the story. So for you, is this set up from you as parent, you as student, you as educator, go ahead and set the story up for us. Okay, so I'm going to tell you one of my favorite stories from when I was still in the classroom. So this was a couple years ago, but um, it was one of those years that a lot of things were more challenging than normal. And you might be questioning, like, can I really do teaching forever? Can I stick in education forever? This is so hard. Like, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. So this is like where I was at at the time when this happened with this student. And it just was one of those events that just felt like so clear, like you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. So Mm. that's my setup. (laughs) You got me hooked right now. Go ahead and tell us what had happened, Nancy. Okay, so uh, what had happened was (laughs) I was teaching second grade in Norfolk and um, I had a student. Well, I've always kind of had the classes that, had friends in there that may have needed a little more um, that may have struggled getting along with some other teachers or you would hear stories about them before they get to your class and so like I had more difficult classes whether it was difficult behaviors or students that had a lot um, of academic growth that you know they had to do a lot of catching up I always had those classes but I liked it because you know, the paycheck is not why any teacher gets into teaching. I just always felt like I was doing real work, when good work when I was in classrooms like that, right? Mm-hmm. But I had this one student, we'll just call him Jay, because I'm not going to put his name out there or anything. He uh, had it a little rougher than some of the other students that I've had. He was homeless. He um, lived in a car with his mom. Um, his mom struggled with addiction. Um, his dad was incarcerated. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this little kid's life. Um, He was very defensive at school. He would get into arguments with and fights with students, teachers, and a lot of people just wrote him off and just thought, you know, he just doesn't care. And I just was like, I don't know who y'all are talking about because that kid right there, he cares more than like any kid that I've ever seen. He just doesn't feel comfortable to like show himself to you because mm-hmm. you guys are don't give him space to be himself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so anyway, this kid, Jay, he had got suspended because um, he got in a fight at the bus stop. So he was out for three days and he came back. And I was teaching second grade at the time. And I, he came in in the morning and he was like looking all like he didn't know if I was going to be mad at him because like he was suspended or whatever. And so he like looked at me like without his head up. And I was like, you're here. I'm so glad that you're back. Like, you know, like I just welcome him right in and his face just lit up. And I was like, I've been waiting for you. I know what happened, but I don't care. Like you're in school. We're safe now. We're going to have a great day. Is there anything you need from me? And he just said, I'm just glad to be back at school. Right. Mm. And so this was around Christmas time and we had like the holiday shop, you know, have you guys ever heard of that? Where like they have all these little toys and yes. the kids can go and buy stuff for their families. I remember I had it when I was in elementary school. So mm-hmm. Jay came to school and he had all of this change in his pocket, like pockets full of change. Like as he's walking through the classroom, you can hear like, like all the change in his pockets. Right. 
And so I, he was like, can I go to the holiday shop? Like as soon as he came into school and I was like, well, you can't go right now. Cause I told all the kids that they cannot go to the, ho- the holiday shop until resource, like that's the rule. And, you know, and he just really wanted to go to the holiday shop. So he kept asking me every subject. Okay. Can I go to the holiday shop? And I'm like, nope, you got to wait like everybody else. I can't give you special treatment, you know? And then recess comes around and he's, um, he asked me if I can hold all of this money in his pocket, like all these, all this change. It looked like he emptied his piggy bank into his pocket. Mm. And of course me, I'm like thinking I'm going to teach him a lesson or something. When he taught me a lesson that day, but I was like, nope, it's your money. You have to hold on to it because you don't want to give your money to other people. You don't know who's going to take it. That's your responsibility, right? Your money, your responsibility. Okay. So I didn't hold his money. Then he started like jump roping and money was falling out of his pockets. Right. Uh And so then I was like, the other kids in class are coming over to like, try to help pick up the money, but I can see this kid. And he's like, you can see it's like the fight or flight thing. Like he's about to like, he thinks people are going to take his money. Mm -hmm. And so like, I had to catch him before he like went off. I was like, Jaden, I'm watching all the money. We're going to get all the money. Don't worry. And I saw a little girl try to put the quarter. I said, I see you. And then he got it back. He got all his money back. And I was like, all right, well, I'm still not going to hold your money. But you think jump, jump roping is the smartest thing to do for recess? Right. You got all that money in your pocket. <laughs> right. And he's like, no, I'm going to go do something else. But anyway, so then we got back in the class. He's asking me again, can I go to the holiday shop? I'm like, Jay, like, I don't know how many times you asked me, can you go to the holiday shop? And every time I tell you what, what do I tell you? And he's like, got to wait till resource or everybody else. I had to give him like three different assessments because, um, he had an IEP who had some special needs and I had to give him his assessments read aloud. And so at that point it was one-on-one read aloud. So it was taking time away from other things in class, but I didn't care. I didn't want anybody else to do it. My co-teacher wasn't there that day. He didn't always try for other people. Like, just because you have a read aloud accommodation, you, you could sit him at a read aloud table and I read aloud to him. He's going to get a completely different score than if he sits at the table with another person and they mm-hmm. read it aloud. It's like, it's the same thing happening, but it's a different energy. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's a different so I, I was like, at the same time too. Yeah. yeah. And he knew, he always knew when he was doing his stuff with me, he could take his time. He knew like he wasn't bothering me. He knew I wasn't going to judge him if he got something wrong or right mm-hmm. or ask the question. He could always ask a question if I, if I'm like, I can't answer that for you. I just want you to try your best. He knew, you know, but if it was something I could help him with, I would, but I got all the um, assessments done and then we're about to go to PE. Right. And so I was like, all right, now it's time. You can go to the holiday shop now. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, but don't take too long in the holiday shop. Cause you know, it's PE and that's your favorite because he could, he was very athletic. He was like, I used to call him my little quarterback. He could throw a football, like, all the way across the field, wow. right, right to, to like whoever was going to catch it. It was insane. But he was also bigger than all the other kids. He was older than all the other kids. But, you know, he was just he had a lot of talents, but he did struggle in school. Mm-hmm. You know, um, also a lot of the accommodations that he had, there were certain people at the school that thought that he was using them as a crutch. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever like seen that happen where they're like, oh, well, they're just you know, they didn't say he's being lazy, but they're saying like, he's not trying. And right. I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you, how are y'all going to say that? Like, I'm with him every day. I see him trying, like, I see it. So it was just frustrating things like that. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and make sure he gets all his stuff and make sure that he gets all his accommodations that he needs. And I just always looked out for him, you know? So anyways, he goes to the holiday shop and I started like grade level planning with my grade level. I was like grade chair at the time. And we were like planning for the upcoming week or something. And then he comes back after a few minutes, he walks back in the classroom. And I was freaking out at first because I was like, why is he back in the classroom? Like, did he get in trouble in the hallway? Did he get kicked out of the holiday shop? Um, did he get kicked out of PE? Because I knew if he got kicked out of PE, it was going to be a bad day because that was, you know, PE and that's the trigger. And so yeah, just, absolutely. Yeah, that's his thing is PE. He's real good at PE. I was like, oh God, I hope he didn't get kicked out of PE, you know? So, but he just walked up right into the classroom. Like he just owned the classroom and he had two little white plastic bags and he just threw them down on my small group table. And he just said, it's a necklace and earrings. And then he just left to go to PE. Hmm. And then I was like, as he was walking out, I was like, Jaden, do you want me to put this in your backpack? And he was like, 
that's for you. Oh, like, oh. and so I was just like, dang. Yeah. Like, I was like, wow. Like, because I know, like, even though his mom had problems, like, with drugs, I knew he loved his mom to death. Um, I thought, you know, he was probably, he might be going down the holiday shop to get something for himself because he didn't have much for himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he just threw that down on the table and he's like, it's a necklace and earrings. And he had got something for me. You know what I mean? And I was like, I just felt so bad for like <laughs> making him hold his own money. And, and I was just like, wow, like it just proved to me like everything that I had thought about him, like all the goodness that was inside of him that not everybody saw, like it was all worth it. Everything yes. that I was doing for him and like having his back and taking all the extra time because that was just such a thoughtful thing mm -hmm. for him to do. Like, with all, I don't even know where he got all that change from, but that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people wrote him off yeah, and mm -hmm. he didn't talk to people. Mm -hmm. He did not talk to people. And he just did that for me. And I was just like, this is why I'm, I'm in it. And so I was good for a couple of years after that happened because I was like, that was just, I felt like it was just God telling me like, you're right in the right place right mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. and that was, that's, that's where the warm fuzzies really come in because Oftentimes, students like Jay are written off really early. Mm -hmm. and then They're they the one, they need the love the most. Yes. You know what I mean? Like some kids go to school, kids that are loved go to school to learn. And kids, I'm not saying that he wasn't loved, but he wasn't getting what he needed. Like if his mom was struggling, she couldn't give him everything that she needed because she wasn't taking care of herself at the time. Do you right. know what I mean? Like. There was a lot of need there. And what really needed to be happening was, you know, people needed to be wrapping their arms around Jay, around his family and trying to support in all the ways that they could. But mm -hmm. I just felt like the opposite was happening. And he was just being written off as like this troublemaker yeah. or lazy. And I was I just never understood it. And I it just bothered me. And so like that day when he went and did that, it just then I could like. Uh, all the teachers at my table just saw him drop that in the table. And then he said it was for me. And I was kind of like, yeah, like, did y'all students buy y'all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all like, wrote him you know, off. Y'all yeah. wrote him yeah, off. Yeah, y'all wrote him off. Y'all thought he was in trouble. Yeah. And he bought me something from the holiday shop. Yeah. Like, did y'all students buy you something from the holiday shop? No. Nope, nope. You know? And the funny <laughs> thing about it is the year after that, um, they moved me to third grade and I did not ever want to go to third grade because like philosophically I'm so against like standardized testing. I hate it so much. And so I was like, don't put me in a testing grade. Like yes. don't do it. My principal was like, look, you're going into third grade because our school was splitting to be a three, five school. And she's like, I don't want to lose you. Uh, and so I went to third grade. Right. So I taught a year in third grade. And then on my second year in third grade, I had my son over that summer. So I didn't start teaching until like October that year. But my co-teacher, my sped teacher, she's like, there's a student in your class. Because that the next year, the first year I was in third grade, Jay wasn't at my school anymore. Okay. So he had transferred to another school. So then my co-teacher called me up my second year in third grade. She's like, there's a student in your class. Um, he just keeps talking about you all the time. He says he knows you. And I was like, well, who is it? And she's like, well, his name is blah, blah, blah. And she tells me his name. I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? So he had gone to another school and failed third grade. And so I got to teach him again uh -huh. in his second year and third. Mm -hmm. And it was just so amazing yeah. because I remember struggling to teach him things in second grade, like how to, you know, stand up for himself, how to speak up for himself and get what he needs um, how to like let adults know that he's upset without, you know, throwing these fits mm -hmm. and how to like the right words to say. And he just struggled so much with it in second, but by third grade, he was a different child. And so I'm like, you're doing so good. I was mm -hmm. like, what happened? And he's like, well, you taught me all of this in the second grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a year to come around. You know what I mean? I've heard stories of other students too, like where I've worked on stuff with them all year, then they start doing it the following year. But mm -hmm. it's like, you don't always see the impact that you're having on people 
immediately. That's you right. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it just sometimes it just comes up. And but we really do have an impact on people as educators. You know yes. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. And it showed that one of my he favorites. needed you. He needed you. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fact that he was back again, mm-hmm. I felt like that was just like my gift. Like you sacrificed to be there for this kid. There was other stuff that went on too because I ha- I went to court with the kid because there was custody stuff going on. Like there was all kinds of family stuff going on. Um, and I went to court. I tried to, I was having his back. I wrote stuff for the judge. And he just, he was a different kid mm-hmm. when he left me in third grade. They took away his special ed services at the, Amazing. when he was in third grade at the other school, they took them away because mm-hmm. they thought the same thing. He's using them as a crutch or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because he doesn't always behave. Like that doesn't mean he doesn't have a learning disability. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, right, right. You can still have a learning disability and have behavior problems like you know so by the time he came back to me for his second year of third i got him all his services back and i said i want it noted like in his file like that this happened to him because if anybody ever tries to take this stuff away from him before just because he's not doesn't act like the way that you think a person with special needs should act you know you don't take stuff away from him like that why would you do that and anyways, he got what he needed. He worked so hard for me all the time. I just, I don't know. I still think about him a lot. I always think about like things he could be doing in life that mm-hmm. are awesome because he was very hands-on. He had a lot of strengths, you know, like a lot of kids do. Right. Mm-hmm. He just, you know, he really struggled with reading, you know, but he had so many things that he was good at. And I just felt like I really wish there was more people around to tell him you know, all those things that he was good at Mm -hmm. and that we saw him and that he was enough, you know? Yes. Think of those formative years where the students are really trying to figure it out. And with him being in your second grade class, that label was there and it was not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you building a relationship with him and him seeing that you could be firm, stern, but also loving, caring and pushing him academically. Like, yeah. he respected that. I'm sure his family respected seeing you show up in court. Like, I had, I'm like telling you, I had, a good rela- I had a good relationship with both of his parents. And both of his parents, like, because once his dad was out of jail, I talked to his dad, too. And I never, like, asked, like, why are you in jail? Right, I never right. did any of that. I don't really care. Like, if he was there, I remember when his dad got out of jail, it was about the middle of the year I had him in third grade. And I remember it was picture day. And I saw him tuck in his shirt. And I was like, okay, like, mm-hmm. oh, you're getting dressed up. You're going to be looking real spliffy in your school picture. And I was like, why, who are you trying to look special for? And he's like, my dad said I should mm-hmm. tuck in my shirt. Mm-hmm. And like, I was like, thank God, like, his dad's in his life because he really needed like yeah. that male role model too. You know what I mean? So it was just really awesome to see him grow over those couple of years and just see him like other teachers started to like look at him like, oh, he's a great student. Like a human you know? being. Like, right, right. To see, I'm like, I've been seeing this all along, y'all. Like <laughs> just because the kid throws a chair across the room doesn't mean he's not a good kid. It means mm-hmm. he needs some help. You know what I mean? But like, they're like Oh, he'll help you with that. He's such a good kid. I think he's been a good kid all along. Some of the best educators in the world are people you've never heard of. They may not be on TV or get the National Teacher of the Year awards, but we want to give those teachers their flowers today. With that said, we present Sprout Outs. Sprout Outs is sponsored by Pinky and Paws Petals. So Nancy, who would you like to sprout out this episode? Oh, my goodness. Um, I guess I will just have to give a sprout out to all of the people that believed in me um, and pushed me into new scary roles Mm -hmm. um, because I just feel like sometimes I need that push to believe in myself. And shout out to all of my uh, friends. I have a really diverse group of friends, and I just love, I've loved being able to learn different stories and learn about all different kinds of families and cultures and communities so that I just have a lot of patience for a lot of different situations. And some of the experiences I've had have helped me 
be there more for students that may not feel seen um, in school. So I wanted to do Sprout Out to all those people that have helped me in my life mm. and any administrators that I've had that have allowed me to just really be myself because um, I am a lot and I they let me, you know, love my kids the way I wanted to love my kids and teach them all the stuff that I need to teach them and all my extra stuff that I like to teach them that's not on the test. So all the people that put up with my crazy and gave me all of my amazing children in my classrooms, they just always felt like they were picked exactly for me. So mm -hmm. We believe when one wins, we all win. Nancy, how can others follow you on social media and help you? Win? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I got a couple different things. Um, I'm on Twitter at Nancy underscore Estepa. Um, I also have a YouTube channel at Nancy underscore Estepa. Um, I just started my own company, Someone Cares. And so you can find me at someonecares.com or um, Instagram, Facebook is at Someone Cares LLC. So I'm kind of all over the place. So if you search Nancy Estepa or you search Someone Cares with the S-U-M, you'll probably come across some kind of social media of mine, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or my company page. I'm all out there. Good deal. If you have a story you'd like to share, just like Nancy, and you want to share that story, but perhaps not be on camera, it's cool. All you have to do is email us at contact at andredotti.org. We'd love to hear your story and feature it on our future episodes. Hey, and if you enjoy See What Had Happened podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and review mm -hmm. on your podcast site of choice. Your ratings and reviews help our podcast to get more noticeable on podcast sites. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the end of this story, but not the last. Don't forget to join us on the next episode of See, See What, what Had happened. happened. Bye. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcasts.